Hi there, I'm Evangelist Matthew Lee and welcome to today's installation of your weekly word of encouragement, which is an initiative of my daily devotional video series, From Heaven at Seven. And I'm excited that the first episode of season two of From Heaven at Seven is going to be airing in just less than two weeks. I'd like to invite you to come and join us for the live premiere of the first episode of season two on the 1st of January, 2022 on the Evangelist Matthew Lee Facebook page, as well as my YouTube channel at seven. 7 a.m. Central African time. I'm really excited and I really look forward to seeing you there. And I'd also like to invite you to join us for next week's special edition of your weekly word of encouragement, which will be our Christmas and New Year's special. So come through, come join us. I look forward to seeing you there. Family, today's message was inspired by a post I saw on Facebook that is just so true. And it reads, remember, faith is needed to survive Egypt. Faith is needed for the wilderness season. Faith is needed to enter the promised land. Do not despise your season. Trust God for faith to go through it. Family, isn't that statement just so true? And it resonates so true, especially for us as Christians and our Christian walk and everything that we're going through in this day and age. I just find that statement so true. We know that the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, and I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Translation where it says, but without faith, it is impossible to walk with God and please Him. Family, you see it there in the portion of scripture. It is impossible to please God without faith. Faith is the fund, one of the most fundamental things to the Christian walk. We need to have faith in everything that Jesus did in order to receive our salvation. But that's just the beginning point. We need to have faith from there on out to walk the Christian walk, to walk with God, as it says there. As we grow from our point of salvation and our walk with God and our relationship with God, so too does our faith need to grow. It is imperative that our faith grows as we walk with God because as our faith grows, we will grow and we will grow to be the people that God's created us to be, do the things that he's called us to do and live the life that God wants us to live. And how do we get faith, family? How do we grow in our faith? The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We need to get stuck into our Bibles. We need to get stuck into the word of God. We need to get stuck into our relationship with the Lord because that's also hearing the Lord. When he speaks to us and ministers to us, it stirs up our faith. When he does things for us and gives us testimonies, it stirs up our faith, family. And when our faith grows, we will grow as Christians and we will be the people that God has created us to be. We will please God because it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Therefore, if we have faith, we are doing things that are pleasing to the Lord. The Bible goes a step further and it says in Romans chapter 14, that whatever is not from faith is sin. In other words, whatever is done with doubt is sinful. So what are we seeing in that portion of scripture? If we do things without faith, if we walk our Christian lives without faith, if we live our Christian lives without faith, it's going. we're going to be displeasing God. We're going to be sinning even. It says there, whatever is done in doubt is sin. What is that saying? It's saying that doubt is the opposite of faith. And when we are walking in doubt, we are sinning. But when we are walking in faith, according to the previous portion of scripture we read, we are pleasing God, family. That is why it is imperative for us as Christians to have faith and to grow in our faith, family. Because as we do this, we are walking away from sin and we are pleasing the Lord. And we all know the portion of scripture so well that speaks about faith. It's Hebrews 11 verse 1, and I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Classic, which reads, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the time title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Family, I just love how the Amplified Classic Translation puts that. What does it say there? Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, once again, that goes back to faith for salvation. Even though we didn't see Jesus down the cross, even though we didn't see him raised from the dead, even though we can't see God with our physical senses, with our physical eyes, and we can't smell him and taste him and touch him and all these kinds of things, faith is perceiving as real fact, that which we cannot perceive by our 
our natural senses. It is perceiving God as real, even though we can't perceive him with our senses, family. And that's faithful salvation. And that's obviously faith going forward as well. As we trust God to do work, do things in us, through us, and for us, we have faith in God. We need to have faith that when we pray, that we believe that God has heard our prayer, he's answered our prayer, and he's commissioned the angels to go about bringing about the answers to those prayers in the spiritual realm to the point where they manifest here in the physical realm where our we will be able to re receive them and with our senses and touch them and feel them and stuff but it is faith that is the fuel that brings those that that pushes those angels propels those angels to bring those prayers from the throne of heaven into the physical realm without faith this cannot happen family we need to have faith that when we're praying that God is answering our prayers I always like to say whenever we pray God answers our prayers in one of three ways the first is yes certainly and he grants it there and then like healing and all these kinds of things it's an instant prayer other times he'll say you know not right now maybe that's because you know there's things that the Lord wants to do first first in you maybe there's some things that he wants to take out of you and shape your character so that you'll be a faithful steward of whatever it's he whatever it is he's going to trust entrust unto you by answering that prayer or, or maybe it's just needs a little bit of time maybe our faith just needs to grow a little bit so that's the second way and the third way is I've got something better for you. So maybe, you know, we're, we're trusting God for a little car, like a like a Toyota Igo or something like that. But the Lord is saying, no, I want to give you a big Mercedes E-Class or something like that, family. So those are the three ways. But if you look at those three ways, not a single one of them is no. It's yes, not right now, or I've got something better for you. God never says no, unless, of course, you know, we're praying a prayer that is counter to the will of God, counter, contrary to the word of God. For instance, praying for another man's wife to become our wife. It's not going to happen. But once again, that reverts back to I've got something better for you because God does. He's got a wife that is better for us. That's not somebody else's wife at the end of the day, family. So we need to have that faith that to believe that God has answered the prayers and that the, and then our faith is used to propel the angels through the spiritual realm to bring about the physical manifestation of those prayers here on earth, family, so that we can receive them and walk in them, family. But we need to have faith because faith is what perceives as real fact what is not revealed to our senses. In other words, faith is perceiving that God has really answered those prayers, that we already have possession of those prayers or whatever it is that God has promised to us, perceiving it as real, even though we can't see it and sense it yet in the physical realm. Which brings me to one portion of scripture that the Lord has been speaking to me a lot about in the recent months. And that comes from the book of Joshua, chapter one, and it's verses two to three from the New King James Version. And it reads, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. And now, family, if we look in this portion of scripture, in verse 2, the Lord says there to, to Joshua, he says, the land which I am giving to them. In other words, it's something that's going to happen in the future. The Lord is saying, I'm going to give them this land. But if we go and look in verse three, it says there, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. In other words, present past tense. It's no longer future tense. So literally in, in a matter of one conversation, the Lord has said, firstly, I am going to give this to you. And then straight thereafter, he says, the land which I have already given you. What does this show us, family? This shows us that when the Lord says something, when the Lord decrees something, when the Lord promises something, when the Lord answers our prayers about something, he is giving it to us there. And then in the, once he's given it to us, once he said it, once he's decreed it, once he's declared it, it is already ours. Once again, the land which I am giving to them going to happen, and then the land which I have given them. 
So when God, we when we pray to the Lord, he answers our prayers. He's going to give us those prayers. He answers those prayers. And the moment he's answered those prayers, we already have them, family. Even though we might not have them in the physical realm, they are there in the spiritual realm. And we need to use our faith as a hand to reach out into the spiritual realm, grab that prayer and pull it in to the physical realm, family. But it takes faith to do that. So what do we see from this here family that the moment the lord decrees something the moment the lord declares something the moment the lord promises us something it is already ours the moment he answers our prayers it is already ours but you might say you know i've answered the prayer but i'm not seeing the physical manifestation of the prayer here on earth well family what is what is this saying to us even though they had not yet crossed the jordan river the lord had said i'm giving you this promised land he said it's theirs, even though they weren't there yet. So once again, it goes back to where it speaks about faith being the title deed. In other words, the Lord has given us the title deed, the right to have whatever it is that we have asked for, whatever it is that we've prayed for, whatever promise it is in the word of God that we are standing on. The moment we've stood on it, the moment we've prayed it, the title deed is ours. It's there. It's ready for us. However, we need to then do our part to go out and receive it, just as the Israelites needed to do their part to cross the Jordan River into the promised land, put their physical feet on that promised land to claim it as theirs so that they could have the experiential possession of that promised land. For us. And it's the same for us. We need to stand on the promise. We need to trust the Lord. We need to pray the prayer and have faith in the Lord to and once we've done that we have received the title deed to it but we need to continue to trust the lord we need to continue to put our faith in action to be able to have the experiential possession of it to continue to pray the prayer of faith what is the prayer of faith the prayer of faith is saying okay lord uh, i pray that you will give me x y and z that's praying and making your request known to the Lord. But the prayer of faith is not praying that over and over again until you get it. It's not saying, Lord, give me X, Y, Z. Lord, please give me X, Y, Z. Lord, please give me X, Y, Z. That's not faith. The prayer of faith is to say once, Lord, please give me X, Y, Z. And then the prayer of faith is to, from there on out, to say, thank you, Lord, that you have already given me X, Y, and Z. Why is that, family? Because that is applying our faith. That is believing that as we pray that the Lord has answered the prayer, he gave us the title deed to it, and we are just now waiting to receive the experiential possession of that. That is putting our feet in the promised land to claim that land. That is putting our faith into action because the Bible says that faith without action is dead, family. That is putting our faith into action so that we can have the experiential possession of the promised land, that we can have experiential possession of whatever it is that we are trusting the Lord for. So family, to link all of this back to our original statement, which said faith is needed to survive Egypt. Faith is needed for the wilderness season. Faith is needed to enter the promised land. We're speaking about faith and that we need faith, which reminds me of one of my favorite portions of scripture, which comes from James chapter one, verses two to four from the New Living Translation, which reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So family, what is that saying? When we're in Egypt, when we're in the wilderness, whenever we're going through difficult things, going through COVID, and maybe you're going through unemployment, maybe you're going through sickness or loss of a loved one, what is it saying? It's saying that this season is testing your faith, but do not allow it to get you down. Instead, consider it an opportunity for great joy because when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance grows, you will become perfect and complete, lacking and needing nothing. What is that saying? It's saying that these difficult times that we're going through, as we continue to push through them, as we continue to put our trust in the Lord, as we continue to consider it an opportunity for great joy, as difficult as that may be sometimes, as we continue to put our faith in the Lord to bring us through that storm, over that mountain, or to slay that giant family, 
as we do this, our endurance has a chance to grow. What does that mean? It means that our character has a chance to grow. And as our character grows, as our faith grows, we will become perfect and complete, lacking and needing nothing. We will grow to be the people that God has created us to be, do the things he's called us to do and live the life that he wants us to live, family. You see, God has a wonderful plan for each and every one of our lives. We are living in the end times, family. I, I believe and many other believe that we are the generation that's going to be raptured, which means we are the last generation that's going to live here on earth, which means we're going to be the last generation to proclaim the goodness of God to the lost and dying world around us, family. We are God's a team. We are born for a time such as this family. And we need to allow the Lord to grow our character, to grow our faith, to grow our endurance so that we can be the people he's created us to be. He's got a wonderful plan for us, family, but it's not just going to fall into our lap because if it falls into our lap and we're not ready for it, that blessing will become a curse at, in, at the end of the day. That blessing will cause us to sin or it will corrupt our character. It will cause us to fall into temptation and into all sorts of wrong things, family, where Whereas when our character grows, our character will grow our capacity for that blessing so that we can be faithful stewards of it, so that that blessing will remain a blessing, so that our call will remain a call and that it will, it will grow us and promote us and not destroy us, family. So whatever you're going through, whether you're in an Egypt where, where you're going through things that you're struggling with, whether you're in a dry season going through the wilderness where the Lord is developing you and shaping you, or whether you're about to enter into the promised land itself, as we saw there in Joshua chapter one, family, continue to put your trust in the Lord continue to have faith in the Lord so that the Lord can do in you through you and for you what he needs to family Con when it, whatever you're going through right now whatever the world is going through right now consider it an opportunity for great joy know and stand firm on the promises in the word of God and the scriptures that says you know things like God is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are calling called according to his purpose even though it may not seem like he is he is family and and, you know, from Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, where it says what the enemy intended for evil, God is turning around for the good, for the saving of many lives. Isn't that a powerful portion of scripture to be standing on in this day and age, family? You see, we need to stand on these scriptures. We need to stand on these promises in the word of God because it's putting our faith into action. And that allows us to consider these difficult times that we're going through as an opportunity for great joy. That allows us to put our faith in the Lord. It allows our faith to be tested and stretched and grown so that we can have the faith that we need, so that we can have the character that we need to do the things that God has called us to do and live the life that he wants us to live, to live the blessed life so that we will have all that we need, lacking and needing nothing, as James chapter 1 verse 4 says, family. So I want to encourage you, put your faith into action and allow the Lord to do in you, through you, and for you what he wants to allow him to mold your character, allow him to grow your faith. Consider whatever it is you're going through as an opportunity for great joy and watch what the Lord will do for you. So to bring it back once again to our statement, do not despise the season that you're going through. Do not despise whatever it is you're going through. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Trust in God for the faith to go through it. Trust in God to grow your character to go through it. Put your time and effort into getting stuck into the word of God, growing in your relationship with the Lord, because as you do these things, it'll become easier. As you do these things, your faith will grow. And as your faith grows and as your endurance grows and as your character grows, you'll be perfect and complete, lacking and needing nothing, walking in the perfect will of God for your lives to be who he's created you to be, do the things he's called you to do and live the life that he wants you to live. So I want to encourage you to do just that. Thank you, family. I hope that this message has blessed you and encouraged you and given you some food for thought. And before I end, I'd just like to close in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this day, that this is the day that you have made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for this, your word. We thank you, Lord, for this message of encouragement, Lord, that faith is needed for Egypt, faith is needed for the wilderness, and faith is needed to enter into the promised land. Lord, help us, Lord, not to despise the season that we're going through. Help us to not despise, to despise everything that's going on in the world around us. Lord, help us to put our faith and our trust in you, Lord, to know that you are working all things together for our good, Lord, because we love you and we're called according to your purpose and we thank you lord that we can stand on the scripture lord that says whatever the enemy intended for evil you are turning around for the good for the saving of many lives thank you lord that we can stand on scriptures like this lord to consider 
these difficult times as opportunities for great joy, Lord, as opportunities for our faith and our endurance and our character to be tested and stretched and to grow, Lord, so that we can grow into the people that you want us to be, Lord, so that we can do what you want us to do, Lord, live the life that you want us to live, so that we can be perfect and complete, lacking and needing nothing, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to despise our season, Lord, but to rather embrace it in faith, in boldness, Lord, so that we can live and do and be the people you've created us to be. Lord, you've called us as your A-team for these end times, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that you are doing a work in us to stir up our faith and to grow our character, Lord, for us to accomplish what you need us to, to accomplish through us what you need to in these end times, Lord, so you can bring about that end time revival, Lord, and so that we can see the multitudes coming to you. Thank you, Lord. We give you alone all the praise, the glory, and the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching my video. I trust that the message blessed you and encouraged you. And if it did, I'd like to ask you to please hit the share button to spread this message and share it with your friends and family on social media so that they too may be blessed by this message. And before you leave, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment, let me know what you think about the content of this message. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, I would like to encourage you to please follow my daily devotional video series called From Heaven at 7, which you can find on my Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel. If you watched this message today and felt touched by it and feel like you want to make the decision today to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and give your heart to the Lord, I would love to encourage you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says salvation so that you can be led to a page where I will tell you more about this and lead you in a prayer that will help you to give your heart to the Lord. And if you watched this video today and felt blessed by it and feel led to sow a seed into the ministry, I'd like to ask you to please click on the link in the video description that says giving. Alternatively, the ministry's banking details as well as our SnapScan QR code are currently displayed at the bottom of the screen. And lastly, I would like to ask you to please go and follow and subscribe to all my social media accounts to be kept up to date and in the loop with everything that's happening in the ministry and every time we upload a video just like this one. Thank you, family. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless.